Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. Yes, the YouTube channel that uses mine and Richard's professional experience to help you with your quest to make a bow and maybe a set of arrows as well. And this week we're taking a look at what we looked at last week, which was a quick look at what I'd been doing in the workshop that week. And this is a follow up to that. I promised you that I'd let you know how I'd been getting on with the bows that I showed you. Uh, one of them was a quad lamb and the other one was a triple laminate. Um, now, I've had a bit of help in the workshop this week. I've had a, uh, the inspectors in. They've come and uh, checked out the wood for me to make sure that it was OK. As you can see, he was quite a busy little chap. Yeah, it looks good. Anyway, enough <laughs> such frivolities and let's take a look at that U-bow that I was working on. Let's talk you through some of the stages that I've been working on this week. As this stave is still a square section, that means the laminations have been glued together and it's been cut up into essentially a square shape. So I need to round off those corners and get it into a D section, the D section being the letter D if you were to slice through the bow you'd see a capital D sort of shape. So I'm using the spoke shave here and removing the corners of the belly. The belly is uh, lemon wood which is a wood which works rather well with bladed tools and is favoured by people like wood carvers because it's closeness of grain. Those of you with eagle eyes will spot in this though towards the handle there, the right hand of the shot, it is starting to what we call pick up. So there's a, a bit of a problem with the grain, a swirl in the grain, and that's starting to gouge out material which obviously can be dangerous once we've cut the bow into this uh, uh, shape. It's very near the finished shape that it's going to be when it's an actual bow, so you really can't afford to lose any wood. As you can see that's really starting to pick up now. So what I'll do is I'll set down that bladed tool, the spoke shave, and I'll use a rasp instead. And that's going to be a lot safer and much less likely to gouge large lumps of material out of the bow. So that's what I'm doing now, and that's getting rid of any of those gouge marks that were there. As I say, in this roughing out stage, um, you still do have a lot of meat to work with, but longbows are so thin, um, you really want to want to be aware of gouging any material out. This bow is for a customer. It wants to be about a 50 to 55 at 27. I write that on there for my own purposes. And where I've cleaned off the back there, I've lost some of the lines. So I need to remark the handle on the back there. That's what I'm doing now, just so I know where everything is, really. And one of the other stages you can use is for getting rid of lumps, which is using the uh, using the plane there. But like I was talking about earlier, this particular piece of lemon wood does start to pick up. So you can see there, I've done this close-up shot, so you can see some of that sort of grain there is picking up. So I'm going to have to try and avoid some of that. Now that I've been working on those limbs, I need to now check the depth to width ratio. Now the handle is still quite thick as you can see there because I've been removing a lot of wood from the limbs. So I'm going to need to remove some off that top of the handle there to get it back down to uh, an even width depth. In this particular bow, the uh, triple laminate, there is a knot in there as you can see. This would have perhaps made a self bow but because of that knot we've uh, sandwiched it in between two other bits of wood to make a triple laminate. Now that I've done all that roughing out the bows up on the tiller, and this is the very beginnings of the tillering, um, uh, as of making the video I haven't done much more to it yet, so this is really just the very much the beginning stage. The first time I've put it on there the string is loose and it's just giving me an idea really of what that stave is going to do, um, whether any of the limbs are bending more than the other straight from the off, sometimes that's possible. The bottom limb tends to be bending a little bit more there. One of the other things I was working on this week was this uh, have a go bow uh, and because it's going to be shot by lots of different people it's got a uh, arrow plate both sides as you can see there. There's something very satisfying about putting one uh, either side there. That's it for this week folks, I'll see you again soon. If you want to see more videos, they're over here. If you want to subscribe, then hit this button here.